So we can all agree Main is built different. In Cyberpunk Edge Runners, he's initially shown to have the most cyber installs out of all of his crew members. He's a former soldier turned mercenary trying to make it big in Night City and everything about this unit reflects that. Bringing our Edge Runners build series to an end, I wanted to make his build different, focusing a lot more on immunities to damage, massive health regen, and generally everything to reflect the tankiness he's able to demonstrate in the show, but while also still carrying a punch. Starting with the weaponry, out of all of the characters, he seems to be the most consistent when it comes to sticking to very few options. From his initial crusher shotgun and projectile launch system to the custom Zhuo Smart shotgun he features in some of the later episodes. As such, that's what we'll focus on here too, but there is one thing that has to be said about the way Edge Runner portrays the otherwise underwhelming projectile launch system. The anime makes it seem as if this can be combined with the gorilla arms, but in reality the game doesn't really permit any of that, nor does this upgrade provide any bonuses to melee damage. I just wanted to clear that up as this upgrade doesn't really scale up with anything besides just being higher level with your character. We're still gonna be using it, but it's more secondary in nature and to make it a little bit more powerful, will use a one-shot mechanic with a tranquilizer route that is just like overall way better in this case. As such, here are the options when it comes to the rocket launcher. Early on at Street Cred 20, you can buy the rare variant from Victor's Clinic. And at the same time, I also suggest buying the sensory amplifier recipe for the same launcher here since it also gives you an extra 20% crit damage. But later on you will want to purchase the legendary variant from Doc Rider here in Wellsprings and since we're here at the same Ripper Dog I also recommend buying the following cyberware upgrades since they are needed for this build as well. This includes the epic Karenzikov since the lower reflexes won't let us use the legendary variant the bionic joints for better weapon recoil, and since we're looking for maximum armor, also the titanium plating for the launch system. Finally, there's also the option for the tranquilizer route. As I said, the rounds over here are much better and technically will be the only ones that can one-shot enemies similarly to the anime, but this only works on weak enemies, not on cyber psychos or on bosses. For the shotgun options, as I've said, we'll focus on the smart ones. Early on, the best option in my opinion would be the L69 Zhuo, which main also seems to be using a custom variant in one of the later episodes. Luckily, you can find this in all rarities, including an epic crafting spec at the weapons vendor between downtown and the city center right here on this side of the map. The upgraded version of this is the Boxing Chong if you want to get that, but this one comes much later after you have already finished the main story and the last mission and more importantly you defeated Adam Smasher and got his secret key card. You will need that to go back at the locked room in Ebunike and grab its legendary recipe from the locked chest right here. Personally, after playing with both of them at the max level, I noticed that there were like very few differences between them and they were quite close to one another when it came to clearing out enemies. So with this build and a few other upgrades, this brings us back to a variant of the smart shotgun build from last year, but now it feels even better, you will survive for much longer and you can always tune it up to very high difficulty should your gameplay need it. Gameplay wise, this feels like a mix between David's and Becca's builds but just combines the best of both worlds and in this case having that extra survivability that's much better than David's but also the better shotgun damage from Becca in this case combined with a much better version, the smart one with the smart link. So unlike the Guts shotgun, this is way more precise, you don't have to worry about aiming your weapon, it tags up to 8 targets in one single go and this means you can just move as fast as you want to and not have to worry about missing any shots. And besides, you can also take down enemies from much further away since the bullets auto track enemies much better in this case. Which brings us to the attributes. Now the skill tree as I said is kind of like a combination between the former two characters. In this case we'll be using 18 body, 15 reflexes, 18 technical ability and 16 into cool. And I want to start things off with the cool as this time around we're going in a little 
bit deeper, specifically for the coldest blood perk for those additional two extra max stacks of cold blood. So the bonus is that we get in terms of the movement speed, headshot damage, health regen, and even resistances if you want to, are significantly higher compared to any other build that we feature so far in Edge Runners. Another unique upgrade path here is Cold and Calculated, which lets us also apply cold blood stacks when doing critical hits and the critical condition to make them last 50% longer. This will come in very handy, especially against single target enemies like bosses, cyber psychos, or even Adam Smasher. You'll want these bonuses when you can't rely on taking down normal enemies and just want to get the stacks anyway. For Ninja 2, we're going with the usual Assassin and From the Shadow for those extra damage points, but also added a Hasty Retreat, which gives us a massive speed boost when being detected. So this is precisely what you need at the start of combat for the shotgun build that benefits from having more speed that we'll cover in just a little bit. I also added, by the way, immunity to poison simply because I wanted to go with a ton of immunities with this build. So between this perk and the armor platings, we'll be completely immune to all status effects like burn, shock, and poison. Speaking of resistances and HP, we went with 18 points into body. Unfortunately, we couldn't pull 20 without sacrificing either cool or reflexes. So you will have to do some sacrifices here, but there is one extra point left if you want to put it in any one of these. So depending on the option you have in terms of distributing these points, you can either go with the legendary or the epic variant of the synaptic signal optimizer you get from Nina in Charter Hill right here on the side of the map. It doesn't really matter, I would much rather take the attributes and sacrifice 10% HP, but you can go the other way around if you want to. In Athletics, we went with pure HP regen everywhere so that even in combat we can instantly regen HP further amplifying that with the cold blood mechanic which is mentioned. Also multitasker and divided attention again much needed for that reload and shooting when sprinting, jumping and vaulting. The annihilation line is almost the exact same as Rebecca's, we want as much shotgun damage, dismemberment and momentum perk upgrade so we can max our damage the faster we run and take down enemies, so just copy it down the way it is. Now, for the fan favorite technical ability, it's coming back with this build. We don't just need legendary crafting, but also it to be efficient, which is why we got efficiency for extra armor for our clothing and the field technician for extra weapon damage when we craft those weapons. The difference, especially in armor here, can be quite big the more pieces you get, and we want to squeeze as much defenses as possible with this build. In the Engineer line, there's only two useful perks, the biggest being Lock and Load, which makes the loading speed of smart weapons 10% faster, and the usual Blade Runner for extra damage against robot enemies and drones. Finally, Reflex is the last stat, which is here for just meeting the minimum requirements to use the St. Davis Stan. Now, technically speaking, May never gets his hand on the legendary St. Davis Stan since David gets it first, but I wanted to create like a what if moment to see how Main would have fared had he gotten his hands on it. So this is kind of like that situation. If you want to be faithful to the anime instead, you will want to ditch this, maybe even sacrifice those like extra points from Reflex and put them back into maybe Body since you won't need these anymore and maybe go with a Militech Berserk MK5 we covered in Becca's video. This is basically way better for tankiness, gives you a huge HP buff and it might be way more suited for a character like Main. And this is pretty much it with the build. As I've said, it combines the best of both worlds, gives you a ton of options for slow motion, also gives you a ton of HP, regen, but also keeping that punch we get from the shotgun build. So it's kind of like a perfect combination of both. Let me know down below if you enjoyed it. As always, a thumbs up on this video would be greatly appreciated. And if you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and even more so activate the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.